Hi everybody, welcome to your first class starter back to school. Um, anyways, I hope that you've tried the class starter first. It's okay if you get it wrong, but try it. Go back and look at your examples we've done before, compare those to this one if you have them at home. If you don't, well, you do make do with what you have. Um, but try it. Then come back here and look for the answers. All right, I'm going to explain the answers now. So if you haven't already tried it, turn the video off, go try it, and then come back. Okay, so here's the diagram. You can see I've separated it into uh, three sections. This section here is the electron gun. And in the electron gun, we speed up electrons horizontally across the CRT. So we accelerate electrons. That's done by creating them here at this position called a cathode, which is negative because there's a billion electrons there. And then there is this area over here called an anode, which is positive, the electrons are attracted to that. So they streak across the space between those two positions um, and accelerate. They accelerate because the electrons are created in an electric field. And as they move across that space, they are going to uh, convert their electric potential energy, having been created in an electric field, to kinetic energy, okay? So in part A of the question, what it asks us to do is it says, um, speed the electrons, find the speed of the electrons as they emerge from the electron gun. All right, so let's do that. And remembering that in the electron gun, they convert electric potential energy into kinetic. So let's start off with that. Um, the kinetic energy here, oops, let's get a color pen. Now, Electric potential energy comes from the equation uh, EP is equal to V times Q, or V is equal to EP over Q, where we arrange that EP is equal to the voltage times the charge. Now it's delta V because it's the change in voltage between the two positions. And you can see over here that I, it goes from um, 450. Oh, did I accidentally erase that a little bit? This should be 450 to 11. Hundred, and that creates a difference of 1550. We call that accelerating voltage. Okay, that's going to be equal to the kinetic energy, which you all know is mv squared over two. Okay, now the voltage in this case from 450, from negative 450 to positive 1100, is a difference of 1550. The charge on a typical electron the mass on a typical electron times the velocity squared divided by two solve for velocity now if we solve for velocity hoping hopefully i haven't made any mistakes we all know that that's possible and i don't have any of you here to correct my mistakes so hopefully i haven't made any I run that through my calculator and I get 2.333 times 10 to the seven, that's meters per second. So that's how fast the electrons are going when they're here, when they emerge through the little hole in this anode onto this side of the CRT. They have 2.3 times 10 to the seven meters per second, okay? That's how fast they're going horizontally. Now, the electrons then fly into the space between these two electric plates. One's positive, one's negative. And we can change which one is positive, which one's negative, depending on which way we want to deflect the electrons. Um, that's why they're called deflecting plates. And that's why the voltage difference between these two plates is called a deflecting voltage. So the deflecting voltage here is 600. How that's distributed, we don't actually know. It doesn't tell us in the question. It just says that they have a difference of 600. It could be positive 100 on the top, negative 500 on the bottom. That would be a difference of 600. Any two numbers that create a difference of 600 would do, okay? Now, in this case, it's positive on the top, so this electron beam will be attracted to that, which is gonna cause the beam to change its direction. It's going to deflect 
or alter the path of the beam of electrons. It's going to pull it upwards. And so the electron beam turns slightly upwards. It accelerates upwards for the time it spends between the plates. Now, part B of the question, it says, find the electric field strength between the vertical deflecting plates. OK, um, here's the vertical deflecting plates. We can find the electric field strength there um, by using the equation for deflecting plates, an equation that's specific for plates. It's used in no other place. So B, and that equation is, of course, E, electric field strength is equal to the voltage between the plates divided by the distance separating the plates. OK, well, the voltage between the two plates we've said many times is 600. Now, as for distance, there are two distances with respect to plates. There's this distance or distance across the plates, that's 4.2 centimeters, and there's this distance, which is 1.2 centimeters or distance between the plates. That's the one we want, and it's in centimeters there, so it's got to be in meters, 0.12. Oh, is that right? No, it's not. Let's try that again. 0 0.012, how about that? Okay. Now, run that calculation, 600 divided by 0 0.012, and I get a 50,000 50, volt per meter electric field strength. Okay, just gonna bring this up. Or the other unit that we could potentially use, that's the same thing as Newtons per Coulomb electric field strength. Okay, so there it is. That's the electric field strength between those two plates. Part C, find the transverse acceleration of the electrons between the deflecting plates. Okay, if we're gonna find acceleration, that's F net is MA, I need to know the force that's causing the acceleration first. So let's do that, part C. Okay, and the force is gonna come from this equation. Electric field strength is equal to force over charge. We already know the electric field strength is 50,000. We know the charge on an electron, for sure, is 1.6. Negative 19, find the force. All right, pull out the calculator again, run that calculation. And I get, unless I'm mistaken again, eight times 10 to the negative 15 Newtons as my force acting on the electrons between these two plates here, okay? Now, once I know that force, I should be able to fairly easily calculate the acceleration using this equation. Right? Now, that is my net force, because it's the only force. There's no forces opposing the upward motion, motion of those electrons. So, 8 times 10 to the negative 50. Mass of an electron, as always, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. Find the acceleration. All right, A equals. Run that calculation, and unless I'm mistaken, I got 8. 782 times 10 to the 15, that's meters per second squared. And that is my transverse acceleration. We call it transverse because it's across the original direction of the electron. Okay. Now, part D, what does it say? Um, the plate deflection on the electron, that's the plate deflection of the electron beam. Okay, so let's find the plate deflection of the electron beam first. I'm gonna create some more space for myself to do this. And this will be B, C, this is D. Now oh, let's go farther over actually. D. 
All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. First thing we need to do is um, find the distance that the electron's going to move upwards. Okay. So that distance is given by this equation. Kinetics equation. Initially, the V naught, the initial speed in the upwards direction or transversely is zero. So V naught times T, that's automatically zero. The acceleration we, we have from previous is 8.782 times 10 to the 15. The time is what I need. I need to know how much time the electron spends accelerating while between the plates. So let's go back to our diagram up here. And so the electron is moving horizontally at a speed of 2.33 times 10 to the seven, and it crosses this space between the plates here. Um, so we know the speed at which it's traveling horizontally, and we know the horizontal distance here is this 4.2 centimeters. So we can use those to find time it spends between the plates. I'm gonna use this equation. Go back down again. Distance is 4.2, which is 0 0.042 meters. Time is what I'm looking for. And the speed, we remember, was 2.333 times 10 to the 7. Ooh, a little crap there. T equals. One point eight billionths of a second, billionths of a second, really fast because the electron's moving really fast. So now we're going to put that in here. That's our time. So acceleration was time one point eight times ten to the negative nine squared. Don't forget divided by two. And unless I made a mistake, I previously calculated that I got 0 0.01422 meters. That's 1.4 centimeters. And that's at the plates. So most likely our next question is probably going to be What's the deflection at the screen? All right, so let's see if we can make some space for that. E. Find the screen deflection. Yep, find the screen deflection. Okay, so screen deflection then. Hmm. This is a little tricky. This uh, works on a triangle. Okay, so I'm gonna draw that triangle just briefly, just very simply. This is the screen here, and this is the plates here, okay? So this deflection here, little d, I've already calculated, it's the 0 0.144, or 1422. And this distance here, and this distance here is known. Look at the diagram. The plate length here, plates run um, essentially here and here. This is obviously not to scale. And it's always half the plate length that gives you this distance here. Okay, so that gives you this distance here, half the plate length. So since the plates are 4.2 centimeters, this has got to be 2.1 centimeters. And then from the end of the plates to the screen is an additional 16.8 centimeters. Okay. Now, this is the deflection on the screen. And we have this, um, what's the right word? Special triangle relationship saying this little length is to that distance as the big dis the big D is to the entire length. So this is L. So big D is to L as little d is to little L. Okay, special triangles. 
All right, so what do I know? Okay, so I know little d is 0 0.01422, that's in meters. I know little l is 2.1, uh, point is kind of big, isn't it? 2.1 centimeters. Big D is what I'm looking for, screen deflection. And big L is going to be 2.1 plus the 16.8. That's 18.9. Cross multiply and solve for big D. I get 0 0.12880. Meters. Notice on the top here, these are in meters and the bottoms are in centimeters. It doesn't matter as long as the L's are the same units and the D's are the same units. Okay. All right, so that's my deflection on the screen. Okay. Oh, there's another question. Yeah. If the accelerating voltage were changed to 1000 and deflecting to 900, what new screen deflection results? Oh, that's a big mess. Do you want to start this whole process over and run the whole equation again? You could. There is, of course, an easier way, right? Isn't there always? So let's figure out what that easier way. If you remember, um, there is this thing called a CRT constant. It comes from this equation. Deflection is equal to the CRT constant deflecting voltage over accelerating voltage. Now, this is an equation that you're normally provided. You'd have to memorize it if you're gonna use it. So the constant is unique to every CRT. Here's what I know. The deflection was 0 0.1280 when the accelerating voltage was 1550. And the accelerating volt uh, and the deflecting voltage was 600. Solve for k. Okay, run k. I got 0 0.3307. Doesn't have units or anything like that. It's, it's just a value. Now, that CRT will always have that k value. It won't change. So let's use that k with the new deflecting and new accelerating. So, VD over VA, the new K is 0 0.3307. The new deflecting, according to the question, is 900. And the new accelerating, 1000. Run that math and I get, or 29.76 centimeters of deflection with those new values. That's in meters. That's my final answer, assuming I didn't do any calculators errors along the way, which we all know very possible, right? But that's the process. Okay, now I'm going to give you a quiz in a couple of days um, with a question just like this. You follow just the same process. It's an open book quiz, and then I'll be instructing you how to send me a photo of your answer, okay? Um, all right, so that is the class starter review of what we did before this extra, extra long holiday you got started. And um, now you should turn your attention to the lesson, which is new material, okay?